Hey, welcome back to another episode of More to the Story. Um, I don't even know what to call it. Like I said at home version last time, but I guess at home again. At home again. Yeah. yeah. But this time my baby's back. Hi, babe. Hey, what's up? I've been gone for like five weeks. I know you've been gone so long. I'm happy to be talking to you again. Hey man, I'm here. What's popping? What's going on with everybody? Feel me? <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> um, yes. So uh do you do you want to address why you were gone? I guess I could ask you that before we started rolling. Uh that's all good. Um well obviously for the first four three four episodes, three. I was um I was on the road. Uh so schedule just didn't align for that. And then Last week's episode, we filmed uh, from the house because I had caught that Rona. That Rona caught up with your boy and was like, sit your ass down. So I had to sit my ass down. Yes. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, shout out to my, to my, my amazing family, uh, mainly my beautiful wife for holding me down because uh, she was bringing food to the door like I was a prisoner. I was, I was <laughs> like, get off the phone, inmate. I I cut a slide in the door and just slid the trays in. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh my god! So, uh, but yeah, it was, it was scary because I was terrified of passing it to them. So I was like, "Yo, you think I should get a room? I just get a room." And she was like, "Well, I'm gonna get a room right next to you." I'm like, "That defeat that defeats the purpose." Because um, I had to make sure you was okay in there. <laughs> this can't send you sick. Just send you off into the world sick. Like that's crazy. I'm a grown up. I'm a big boy. I've seen you sick before. You're not a big boy. All right. First of all, <laughs> it's, it's running rapid right now. So, but anyway, so shout out to uh, Fran for holding me down, man. And the kid helped out too. Uh, y'all see the TV has turned around. I was, um, where, where Farron is sitting right now, the patio is directly in front of her. So I would go down and sit on a patio outside and they would turn the TV and they would sit on the couch in the corner. We watch movies together and shows together. And that's how we got family time in while I was quarantining. Yeah. So, uh, but it was, it was, it was a great, it was a great time um, to have family around. It wasn't a great experience. Um, and it was like, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was tough, but we made it through. I'm excited to announce that I tested negative today uh, on my first test. I took a second test, uh, which was like the PSR one. So I PCR. PCR, I get that one back on Friday, and then I'm going to get another rapids tomorrow. So once I get three negatives, I'll feel comfortable going back in the studio, being around people. But I just don't want to risk it. Like even tonight, I'm still not risking. I'm still staying in the office. I'm still going to quarantine, which is why we're doing uh, this podcast uh, from separate rooms in the apartment versus doing it together because I just didn't want to risk it yet. So I want to get those three confirmations, and then I feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Also, uh, another announcement. Bam, 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 bam. Man's birthday is this upcoming Friday. So you guys are going to be watching this on Tuesday. Her birthday would have just passed. So she's going to yeah. celebrate her birthday this weekend. April 16th. You know what I'm saying? She's going to be 22. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Tell uh, the truth. I'm going to be 27. She's going to be 27. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> but we here, man. So, you know what I'm saying? We made it work. Work through it. Even with all the adversity. Uh, we here, you know what I'm saying? We yes, here. we are here. I'm happy to be talking to you again. Happy we're back. All the things. Um, I want to jump into because of um, everything that was going on with you. I've been putting off this email from. That's loud. Can you hear that? Mm-mm. Oh, okay. So it's just loud to me. Um. I've been putting off this email from one of our more to the story listeners, and um, I only put it off because he wanted um, both of our um, perspectives. input, yeah, our perspectives on it. So mm-hmm. this is not a disturbing DM. This is a listener um, kind of advice situation which i already responded to him but he did give me permission to share it on the show so um i'll jump into that so uh no no names he signed it dude so we gonna his dude um so the subject is butt stuff 
Um, and he starts it off with, love you guys, love the show. I need some advice. My wife has been wanting to do me in the butt butt for a minute. I've been entertaining it lately because this is the woman I'm going to be with for the rest of my life. So why not offer it up? Well, we were doing what grownups do one night and she stuck her dry ass fingers up my butt to test the waters. Mm. And it completely turned me off. Yeah. Like my pickle packed his bags yes. and didn't come back that night. Yes. <laughs> pickle. So the butt stuff is out the window now. Mm -hmm. Now her ex BF, who is also her best friend, is mm -hmm. into that stuff. I agree to let her do that to him. Mm -hmm. My question is, do I let her do that stuff with him? P.S. I am very secure with our relationship. I am not the jealous type or anything like that. I really just want her to be happy and fulfilled in life. Gotcha. PPS, she has no feelings toward dude. They are just friends, and I believe her to the fullest. Mm -hmm. Sincerely, dude. So, so whatever we was yeah. gonna talk about on this episode, we ain't gonna get a chance to do it because we finna be here for a minute. I, I, got, <laughs> I got sixteen bags unpacked, shout I got some bags unpacked. Uh, do you okay. want to? Oh, first of all, let's say this. <laughs> Before we dive into this, let it be known that the advice that we're going to give is of our personal opinion. We are not registered therapists and we're not relationship specialists. Uh, or gurus. Or go gurus. We are not, I don't want to be looked at as relationship goals uh, because we still figure we just had a real conversation for about an hour about parenting and joking with each other and stuff like that. And cause we still figuring out, I think life is a constant lesson that you should always yeah, be involved yeah. in. Um, and always be learning, always, always be, be open to learn. Uh -huh. yeah. And also, also say, like we don't have all the, I want to reiterate, we don't have all the answers. So all of this is going to be personal uh, opinion and Farron and I might not even agree on this. This is not something we've talked about previously. I mean this this email and I'm she knows I'm very 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 against butt stuff. That's just not my thing. Um, so with that being said, uh, Fanny, you want to start first? And also, um, let, I let, feel me, like, uh -huh. let, me, let me say this. I, I'm I'm I want to, I'm going to text Farron and see what all we can tell y'all uh, <laughs> because I don't want to say anything that's going to make me have another have to have another conversation after this. So I'm I'm going to text you. Uh, I'm already you know what, like. It's not, it's, all, it's, 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 I'll just keep it general, babe. I'll just keep it general. I'm, I'm ready to just be like, we need to talk. <laughs> like, <Yeah. just laughs> already in, already okay. said, we, we need to talk. Well, okay. okay. Um, yeah, let, let that marinate. And before we get into it, because I feel like we are going to be there for a minute. Before we get into it, uh, let's have a word from the sponsor of this episode. So uh, uh, this episode is brought to you by BET Plus Bigger Season 2. Now streaming only on BET Plus Bigger, mm -hmm. the wait is over for a brand new season of the hit original comedy from executive producer Will Packer. Lane, Veronica, Vince, Tracy, and Dion are back. For these five driven college friends, this season is an obstacle course with their love and career goals waiting at the end. Is Lane going to slay or fumble a huge moment for her boutique? How far will Tracy go to keep her social footprint from shrinking? Can Dion get his swagger back at work? And will Veronica stop hustling backwards with her ex? Is the ambition and desire of these 30-somethings enough for what lies ahead? Watch and see. Plus, this season guest stars Tori Spelling, Christopher Play Martin, and Carly Red join the fun. Get big laughs and get your whole life with something bigger. Watch season two now streaming only on BET Plus, where you can stream Black culture anytime ad free. For more, visit BET Plus. There it is. There it Listen, is. It's so funny because I have to do 
two ads for bigger too. I have to do one for Zuma with the homies next week and then also do one for uh, Wording is Hard. And I'm texting Chase and Tristan right now because I'm going to have them come on uh, Zuma with the homies. So Tristan will be on, well, Chase will be on next Wednesday and uh, uh, Tristan will be on the following Wednesday while I'm doing those promos just so y'all can put a face to the name and to the show, and you can see, you know, these cool people. These are my friends. So, nice. I'm, the show, so I'm really excited. Okay, look at your friends with the stars. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm all your shit. Um, <laughs> listen, I'll let you go first. Wait, did you get my text? Um, sir, I'm okay. using the phone you told me to use. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't know why I thought you were using your work phone because I thought you said you were on your work phone when I changed your name. Oh no, I had it's it's involved. Don't make me explain it. Okay. So you could you could text my work phone if you want to, but I don't know what the text from my personal. You know what? Phone. It don't even matter. It's, it'll be general. It's, it'll be general. So I'll let you go first, or unless you want me to go first. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> let me check. I just, look, look. just give me a second. She's so nervous. <laughs> Oh, why did you even ask me that? I didn't know if it was okay. You've already mentioned it. Okay, all right, well, fine. Several times. All right, well, cool, all right. Um, yeah, but I, I feel like I want your, okay. your views first. Just be prepared for me to interject. Okay, cool. But first <laughs> of all, I don't do butt stuff. It's not my thing. It's not something I want to participate in. I don't think my butt is ever something that should be used in that manner. <laughs> I'm not judging anybody else. It's just it's just not something that turns me on. But I also like right. I know guys that like like they 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 nipple suck and shit like that. I don't get nothing out of it. If you suck on my nipple, you might as well just be massaging my pinky finger. Like that's the equivalent <laughs> of excitement that I would get from from that. It's just not one of my spots that, that I have to say that that was a disappointment when I realized like you really got nothing out of that because I'm like that's kind of I enjoy it so much. I just spit and I had learned, or at least thought I learned, that men and women's erogenous zones were like kind of one for one. So I'm like, uh, women like the whole nipple thing, maybe. And uh, you yeah, no, nope. okay, just, just keep just going. My, just my penis. Um, <laughs> just, just my penis. Um, when it comes to her just jamming it up there, I think that was a mistake on her behalf. I mean, talking about it is one thing until he agrees to it. I feel like that's kind of an invasion of privacy. And then also you could potentially ruin the trust in that sexual part of the relationship because I understand being sex drunk and just like, I want to take it to the next level. Cause that's the first time I ate Ferris ass. It's like, we were just <laughs> fucking, right? We was gone. Uh, uh, that's, uh. And I was that's I what was, you should ask me if you could bring up. <laughs> I was uh, uh, and I was like, I gotta take it to the next level. And I was like, turn over, <laughs> right? So that and she was the first person to ask I mean, Like I just that's just I hadn't done that before. Um so um I understand that, but that's that was also something that we had talked about previously, and she was like, I like that shit. And so that was that was the that was the okay, that was the uh a permission to do it if you will it's kind of like doing something unsolicited like fellas don't send an unsolicited dick pic if a lady wants it she's gonna ask for it right she's gonna be like what that did do let me see something right so i feel like her doing that uh maybe she felt like she was gonna spark it uh, spark a, a liking to it of him but i feel like there was also uh unsolicited um so i i, I feel like that that could have that could potentially put some strain on it when it comes to um, you know exploring your options and stuff like that, like I, I think, like I think every relationship should set their own boundaries for what is and what isn't allowed. Like you know, if you talk to your parents about like, hey, we're thinking about you know, or your dad or your mom, like, yeah, I'm thinking about letting such and such, you know, you know, experiment with such and such because you know they got history. There's nothing emotional. It just be for a physical thing. Like you, more than likely, a person. Oh, that's crazy! You inviting other people into your marriage, boy. You asking for it. It's like things have changed so much. You know what I'm saying? Like I think talking about it is is the first step in going in the right direction. And also talking about it, being open about it, allevi alleviates alleviates. I'm sorry, alleviates the the need and necessity to hide things and sneak around and 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 be on that type of shit. And everybody's not going to agree with it. But everybody ain't 
eating at your house. Everybody wouldn't agree with the food that you make every night. Everybody wouldn't agree with what bills you prioritize for payment and things of that nature. What goes on in your household really should be the decisions of the people that are engaged in that household and in, in that relationship. So I think that <clears throat> if dude is comfortable with it and she's assured him that it's not going to be anything other than just a physical aspect, then that's y'all business. You know what I'm saying? The whole ex thing might be a little, you know, gray area because there might be some feelings there but if it's strictly physical she ain't laying up and caking up afterwards and not you know having breakfast in the morning and stuff like that then it's, it's i think that you know it still leaves that door open a little bit but mm -hmm. it reduces the the chances by you know opening or igniting old flames but you know, anytime with the ex is just you know it's always that possibility right. but again even with yeah. that even with that like even if that door opened up an open relationship for them that's something they have to discuss and something that they have to be comfortable with talking about. Like threesomes are still taboo. As, as long as they've been around, they've been around since Greek time. We all yeah. have seen and heard the Greek uh, stories of, of the big orgies and all that type of stuff. And even mm -hmm. medieval times, like it's just what they did. So, but even now today, those are still taboo. And me and Farron have talked about it a, a number. We talked about it today. I was like, hey, let's. You know, let's go to San Diego. Let's go find somebody to record us. Let's get crazy this weekend. It's your birthday. Let's do some Molly. Let's let's go crazy. Get somebody to film us, and smack it. Let's be. I mean, let's go crazy. Let's spit on some walls. Let's go. Let's go all out. But that's something that we're comfortable with. Something that we would talk about before we even do anything like that. Right. Uh, right. And I feel like that's something that everybody should make their own decision. Now, I understand talking yeah. to your friends about it, getting their input in it, but ultimately, like, that's. It has to be something that y'all agree on, be comfortable with, and are are accepting of. Am I? Yes, right. So I I agree. I'm happy we're on the on the same page. Um, and I actually <laughs> my response back. I hate you. I, my response back to him was like so involved because I was like, I have questions and I mean hopefully you've asked yourself these questions but I just you know I just want to put these out there to see what you think is so I'll actually just read my response because I stand by it 100 percent so um uh you know just aside from thanking him for even caring about what our opinions are um the I did let him know like his his feelings were valid. So let me just read it verbatim. Mm -hmm. Your response and reluctance to entertain but but stuff is completely valid. What wife did was not okay. It was pretty cool of you to um, open up to it since it was wasn't really your jam to begin with. And you know like you know the things we do for love, but. Um, while I logically understand the decision to allow, quote unquote, allow wife to partake in but but stuff with um, her ex slash bestie, I have some questions you may have already answered for yourself. Number one, did you two talk like really talk before and after? Wife needs to know where she went wrong and understand your boundaries. Have you thought about and shared what would have better prepared you for a penetration? Sounds like she dove in, no pun intended, once she saw you coming around to the idea. Your yellow light looked green to her. Mm, that's good. I like that. I like so, that. Um, what'd you say? I like that. Oh, thanks. I'll be thinking and whatnot. So um, now my second point, like it's still sex. Are you expecting this to be strictly pegging encounters? It won't be. Like, manage expectations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chances, it won't be. Yeah, um, and, penis out. His penis is hard, and he's going to let her do that. He, he, he definitely like They're going to get more comfortable with each other and be like, it's just, you know, like, this isn't, we're not together. We don't have these feelings for each other. I just feel like at some point it's going to cross a yeah. line. And it's like, yeah. are you prepared for that? You have to talk about it. You yeah. know, we have said a million times over, communication is key. For sure. Um, and uh, my third point, have you considered that while this may temporarily suffice her carnal interest, she'll still want that experience with you? Mm -hmm. Having sex with someone else will not replace having that connection with you. 
So you may have just opened up that door to only circle back to doing it yourself. If that happens, can that door be closed again? Are you prepared to entertain anal again? Mm. So, um, and just, I mean, his question, can you hear that? No? Yeah, but don't worry. So, okay. I, hear, I, hear it through the window. I just didn't know whether I need to close the door. It's, I didn't want to, um, you know, I like the door open, that's all. But anyway, so um, just his question was, whether or not he should allow his wife to do it. And I'm like, I can't answer that for you, but you should think of all these things, plus probably more I didn't mm. even think to address. Um, and uh, just like over communicate, like once you're, you start inviting somebody else in like over communication in a relationship period, especially uh, a marriage is like, is vital in my opinion and for to do something like this you just really need to just like think of all of the possible scenarios and just really put everything out there because you don't know this third person as well as you know each other and even in a marriage like we just said before we got started we're still learning each other you know so you're still learning each other and then you're inviting somebody else in to learn your dynamic you as an individual, and it's just, it's just a lot. So, um, and expect them to respect that too. Like it's, it's just a lot. So I did like, I just, I had questions and I didn't even, <laughs> if I had like actually numbered them, it's probably six questions I asked total, but I just made like three points. Like, did you think about these things? Mm -hmm. But I totally um, agree with you. It's just, is very involved. Who's ringing right now? We never get visitors, and right now when we record, and somebody's ringing the doorbell. I'm pretty sure that's probably the UPS guy. Yeah, just leave it. I don't think he's gonna ring it again. I think they're just letting us know something's out there. Yeah. Oh, is that the rug I just bought? Either that or um, the shoes I just bought. The what? I say either that or the shoes I just bought. Oh, no, the shoes will go in the hub. That's probably a rug. The rug is too big. Okay. You better be my rug. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's messy. But at the end of the day, the, the whole moral of the story is wife should not have done that. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the trust, like, I get it. I understand why his pickle responded. He called it a pickle. I understand why his pickle responded the way it did. Um, yes. So did you have anything else you wanted to touch on, sir, before we get into No, I think I think that's I think that's that's about right. Uh, I feel the same way. Yes. Okay. So what we the topic for today is actually um, um, I thought it was going was called grind culture, but in my research, they refer to it as hustle culture. Mm -hmm. um, babe, do you know what that is? No. What are you doing? Well, stop doing what you're doing. Um, I'm not near you, so I can smack your hand. So just stop. You're making me call you out. All right. Jesus, right here. Um, but yeah. So do you know? babe what hustle culture is no okay let me break it down for you so hustle culture is a trend where people believe that the most important aspect of life is to achieve professional goals by relentlessly and continuously working hard mm -hmm. any chance of self-fulfillment depends on the grind and personal sacrifice and the hustler has to sacrifice a lot, almost everything. They have no personal life. They barely enjoy anything. Their days are a long list of chores and choices, all geared towards career advancement. Even leisure activities like meditation and yoga or travel have a professional dimension since they are meant to heighten physical stamina and attention spans. So that's what hustle culture is. And um, just uh, in our recent conversations, what what's that face? 
What the face? Because I feel like you you save this just for me because you feel like I don't relax. And I feel like I'm targeted in this episode <laughs> and this topic. And I feel like you could have did this with Melissa and Angel, <laughs> but you held on to this motherfucker because you're petty. <laughs> you're petty as fuck. We're equally yoked. Does that work right now? No. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> No, seriously, you know what though? On one hand, like you know me, I oops, I like to to do things and like sign off and and be fully engaged in like extracurricular things, unwork related things. But I used to really, really envy people who were just always involved in something because they just seemed like so important and so much weight was like on their existence and um I remember like just feeling like you know I wish I was that that much of a valued member at whatever job I had at the time and then just moving through life and getting a job where I was I was Mm -hmm. like I don't like it I don't like it Stop calling me for things. I like you wanted I to be that to... nigga. Then when you was that nigga, you was like, I don't want to be that nigga. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but when I tell you, I am physiologically incapable of just like going like completely nonstop. Like you get to a point where, like something where your your health kind of plays plays a role in you stopping. Uh-huh. Me. My brain actually shuts down and it's like, I have to go to sleep. Like I have been at work and been so busy and been doing so many things and felt like super productive. And then something would happen where my brain would literally shut down. And I was like, I have to go take a nap and I would leave because I had no other choice. It was either fall asleep at my desk or get up and like find a safe place yeah. to go to sleep because I could not go any longer. And it's like, I, I, I slept well last night. I was mm-hmm. fine today. I don't know why I'm shutting down like this. And I couldn't, ex- I still can't really explain it other than I was just on overload and my body was like, it pressed the off button. It was like, you, you can't, you yeah. can't do anything else. So um, so I, I get it because it's still times where like, I see you like working so much and I discounted the, the, uh, the toll that taking care of home played too. Mm-hmm. So I always minimize that until I started doing more than it's like, shit, I got to do all this and I got to fucking do all that too, you mm-hmm. know? Fucking do it. And it's, so I feel like I'm still doing so 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 much i'm just not doing what i wanted it yeah like i don't want to cook but i ain't got no choice mm. sometimes um but anyway so you you were not necessarily targeted because you are not alone in this story so this is not just for you this right. is for people like you does that make sense uh-huh i do <laughs> babe don't be that way um so anyway one i saw a note in um this article on a site called scary mommy Mm -hmm. where um they were just trying to pinpoint where the whole uh where this started basically and um i don't even want to make it i'll just you know state this but I don't want to make it like a a race thing uh or anything like that because it's like this is just people I feel in general if you just pay attention to tv and social media and stuff like this is just something that's in some people Mm -hmm. um and it seems like it's in more and more people because they see other people doing it so it's just like kind of snowballing But anyway, someone, um, you know, kind of argued the point that for the grind culture is born out of the idea to please the white boss. Mm. 
the white man, um, which is, you know, the white man or woman who, who leads the company, um, the, um, or the organization or whatever, at the detriment of the brown and black person's health. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I'm not a hundred percent, what do you think about that? I'm not hundred percent sure. Maybe in some instances, I could definitely see that in some instances, especially like if you work mm-hmm. for a traditional setting, your, your mm-hmm. boss or manager is white and, you know, you like you miss football games and stuff like that to make sure that you're on the boss's good side. But I also think it, it, it deals more with just financial stability and being able mm-hmm. to provide for yourself and your family. I think that's mm-hmm. more so what it is. Like for me, I work so hard because I never want to be broke. Like I never, right. I never, I never want to go back to where I came from. I, you know, I love the city that made me, but I don't ever want to move back to to East St. Louis. I don't, I don't even want to move back to St. Louis uh, right. after you know experiencing what life can be moving out of a somewhat big city to a, a very big city, one that really caters to what you want to do. So mm-hmm. that fear is what really drives me, and I've said it multiple times that mm-hmm. you know my fear of success is stronger than my will to succeed. And so on the days where my will to succeed isn't enough. You mean your fear of failure? Yes, my fear of failure is 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 stronger and more powerful than my will to succeed. So on the days where my willpower isn't cutting it, I think about failing. I think about going back to the city. And that's where I, I am able to harvest extra energy, that extra motivation to push through and finish strong because that fear is so crippling and so devastating mm-hmm. to me is like I can I can never do that. I can I can never go back to the orange rice house. You know what I mean? Like I can't. I showed them when I went home. I, when I did that video of like mm-hmm. where East St. Louis, where I'm from, and stuff like that. It's like, bro, like just even traveling through the streets, and it was sparking so many emotions in me. Like I was just I was a ball of emotion because it was so many traumatic experiences, and there was some good too, but so many neg- negative things associated with certain blocks, certain areas of the cities, mm-hmm. certain houses, you know, like when I don't have the the wheel to go on, that's what I, I pull from. And that fear mm-hmm. lights a fire under my ass like no other. Okay. And that I understand and respect. My reason for wanting to like be this like all involved person that's pulled a million different ways was like, pretty much um, because it looked glamorous. Mm -hmm. And that was something else that was tackled in an article I read. Uh, And they even have a term for it called toil glamour. So that um, the toil glamour of hustle hustle culture extols overworking and burnout and um, signals you're a hard dedicated employee. Mm -hmm. um, And like, because it, it just makes you feel like important. Yeah. It, oh, you're talking so, about the glamour associated with being a good worker and like, let's give a fan a round of applause. She did a great job leading this this event or she really grabbed the bull by the horns and did this or the glamour associated with the, the money, like the end process that you're able to buy the clothes and the shoes or all of it together. Like, I'm, I'm trying to understand like so that. All separate. of it together. Initially, it was like um, the, you know, you know me, I'm all for like gratification. I love a good at a girl. Like, look at you, you're doing it. I love that. I and know. so sometimes... <laughs> sometimes it was just like I just wanted to be acknowledged what what's happening there you go get it that's a great you're a good girl you're doing a good job <laughs> I no, hate you oh my god um so anyway I it was this like journey for you <laughs> I love this journey for you <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> but um so it was it's, it was very much like I just wanted that that recognition and I just wanted to be seen as like this super important, busy person, you know, a time is money type person doing all these things, but actually, you know, producing some out of it, not just looking yeah. like I'm running around like crazy, but, you know, get, you know, p- producing something like I just wanted that a successful the, the glamour of that yeah you know what's crazy what's to speak on that though really quickly for me 
I always know I'm going to do a good job once I understand the task at hand. What's more mm -hmm. important to me is keeping up my reputation of getting shit done. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like the glamour, like that's cool. My thing is more so about making sure that the job gets done and that my name was a sullied in the process. Like, cause I, I feel like, you know, coming from an entrepreneurial background and, and just having that type of hustle mentality, all I have is my name and my results. Right. So mm -hmm. for me, that's the biggest thing is, is, is that my name is attached to something that is quality and um, successful. You know what I mean? So like for me, it's, it's, it's like the attaboy sort of, but more so than like, hey, that motherfucker to hear. He like, even was, even though Sydney was lying when he said that he put, he had me down for his emergency contact. When I asked him initially, I was like, why do you have me down for your emergency contact? And he was like, mm -hmm. cause you a trustworthy nigga. Like I could, de you're a dependable nigga. That was his response. And we laughed about it. But to me, it was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, tell, tell me that again. Right, tell me that, again. Right. that dependability that people know I'm going to get shit done is so mm -hmm. important to me. More yeah. so than like if it was a group project, me getting the fame and the analogy for it. the fact that it was done, it was done well, it was perceived well, is is the overall like gratification that I need. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's good. So you think you're better than me? Is what yes. I feel. Yes, I'm way better. <laughs> fucking fucking blow yeah. you out of the water. This is Battleship. I sank every one of your fucking battleships. You hear me? Uh, you're literally the worst. Um, yes. <laughs> Why are you being the worst? So good at being the worst. <laughs> but um, so I like the way that uh, where is his name? Dr. Um, Brian Robinson put it. So he basically like broke it up into two different like groups so it's like when the hustle culture drives you and when you're um drawn to it because you're working from like the inside out does mm -hmm. that make sense so when it drives you you just like become a uh, kind of powerless to just meeting deadlines and and being there for um other other people you're just in it to people please and mm -hmm. to look good to other people. Um, and like you grow so accustomed to just doing it that you're not even aware of what's going on with you or your surroundings. You're just working to like meet deadlines, to, to be there for someone else. Mm -hmm. um, but then he put like, when you're drawn um, to it, and you're working from the inside out, like you're the master to your life instead of a slave to it. Mm -hmm. You come from like a centered, calm place um, and it puts you in charge of your busy mind instead of like, you're just like, you know, just kind of right. all over the place and, and hectic and chaotic. Um, and you're more attuned to what's going on with you and know when to, to step away. So, and I like this too, uh, that he said, there are 1,440 minutes in one day. Five minutes of that day, like should be focused on just quieting your, your mind mm -hmm. and centered on quiet places that like lets you, you like five minutes, five mm -hmm. minutes. Ooh. I'm, I'm going to send you a daily calendar invite, like just five minutes. Just stop. Decline everything. <laughs> Babe, let me, let me help I you. I don't. Silence, let me help you be great. Silence is so deafening to me, if that makes any sense, because mm -hmm. it means that I'm not doing something that I could be doing. And it's not even like FOMO in, in a sense. It's more so about just not being as productive as I, I could be. And anytime mm -hmm. I'm sitting for too long, unless I can, you know, justify like this week watching shows and catching up on movies and stuff like that, because I couldn't go out. That's that, that me being in quarantine justified me being lax. But you know, I, I even with that, I came up with a whole new line of shirts, got them <laughs> scheduled, scheduled uh, podcast, scheduled a photo shoot, schedule tests, like I still was like, cause I just can't mm -hmm. do that. And I know that five minutes is necessary and I've been really trying to do it more like with the Calm app and just, 
you know, and, and for me, kind of taking that that five minutes for me is is really like making a playlist. That's time when I get to sit back, do something I enjoy, which is find and listen to new music, and also be able to share it. It's always going to be about doing something I like to do, but also sharing it with someone, whether it be you know the mm. the, the the supporters, the patrons, with you, with the fam or friends. Like it's always about that. When it's just me, as much as I do like my alone time when I'm just sitting doing something, I just don't feel productive. And I don't know if that's like that fear. You've been sitting doing nothing? What did I say? You said sitting doing something. Oh, sit, I just wanted yeah. to make sure I understood you. Yeah, that, that, yeah. I, just sitting and doing nothing is, 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 is difficult for me. And I don't know if it's associated with that fear of failure thing or it's like making the most out of life. Like I, I, I really feel like once you've had uh, a near-death experience and I've had like three of them, Mm -hmm. I feel like that also makes you look at life differently. It's like take yeah. advantage of every moment that you have while you're here, you know, and that's, Definitely. that's another motivating, uh, um, aspect of life for me is because like, I don't have to be here. I could have been gone a couple yeah. of times. So the fact that I'm still here is like, I gotta go. I gotta, mm -hmm. I gotta tackle as much shit as possible. And without, with, with, with the risk of sounding dark, it's like, I don't think I'm gonna be here for a long time. I think I'm gonna be here for a good time. Like I ain't saying like next year or, or at forty or nothing like that. I just don't think I'm gonna make it to like ninety. Like I just I just don't see it. Like whether it be from my 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 lifestyle or just you know family genetics or whatever it is. So while I'm here, I want to work really hard. So by forty, if I don't want to have if I don't want to do something, I don't have to because financially we straight. I've worked mm -hmm. so hard. I've had set up so many streams of income that you know the real estate and the businesses and the clothing company and if i want to go on tour if i want to then that's just extra money but these extra these other sources of income are viable sources for us to live off of and not only live but continue to employ people and 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 have gainful income for ourselves if we want to like travel or buy a vacation or yeah. something like that so Which i'm trying to work hard as i can right now so when i hit that number that i set myself to retire if I so choose to do so, I can do that and not mm -hmm. have any type of reservations about it. Yeah. And that's what one of the things I was when I was just looking at, like how to like understand what this is and turn it around. One of the things I didn't even see listed, but um, I think about between us is that. I need to be that person that shuts down because then you know, I, I get who you are and uh, let you run yourself crazy. But then it's also like, hey, we need to plan a blah, blah, blah to do this. And that forces you to schedule this this time off. And yeah, you work like crazy up into it. But mm -hmm. then when that time is off and it's supposed to be dedicated to us or family or whatever, I hold you to it. Mm -mm, what you doing? What you doing? Focus. Like, you know, like, let's, let's do things. Let's, <laughs> don't do that. You're welcome. You should be thanking me right now. Ugh. Um, but so I really, I feel like everyone should have someone to like hold them accountable to, to do that. So I just want to drop a few things before um, we get up and out of here. Cause we see how the hustle culture, grind culture, and we see hustle porn as they call it all the time on um, oh, yeah. social Work media and stuff. Baby. Stack those hours up, baby. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ooh, that's, oh, a heavy, um, that's a heavy workload. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, so we see it like all the time on social media and stuff. Everybody just so busy, but and it's great. Like build multiple streams of income, do these things, but also take care of yourself. So um, understand that hustle culture, like you said, comes from a place of fear. So um, you work hard because you're afraid of losing what you have or. A competitor coming in and and knocking you knocking you back a few paces. So it's um, just pay attention to to where you are and um, how to in what what is actually driving you. Right. Um. Because if it's fear, that's it's it's not it's not safe. It's not yeah. it's not safe, and it just leads to to stress. Um. 
And they talk about, they mention like, you know, catch it from the start, avoid it from the start, but so many of us are already so deep in it. Catching it at the start is kind of, don't, don't even matter at this point. But if you are just starting out, be sure to, if nothing, if nothing more, take that five minutes a day mm -hmm. to just find, find your peace. Um, and just work on finding the, the right balance because success is easier and more sustainable if you have the right balance. So remember to, to stop and enjoy yourself with emails and phone calls and everything and videos that needs to be watching all that just being in our pocket all the time. We feel like we have to engage in those things all the time. When that email could wait, that phone call could wait, like things, things can wait a few minutes while you just, while you peace yourself. Mm -hmm. Peace, I like that, peace yourself. Anyway, so um, that, and it's just, just the stress, the stress on the, on the body. Like just be aware, listen to your body, listen to your body. Like I have to listen to mine so I don't fall asleep at my desk or while driving like I have literally gotten up from my desk and either sat in my car or gone to what I wouldn't touch now with a 10-foot pole but at the time we had wellness rooms at mm -hmm. the office and I would take a sweater and wrap it around the old communal pillow in the room and be knocked out but right. all I needed was like 20 minutes so um I can't do that 20 minutes is gonna aggravate me you know no, I mean? that's all I need. And I would like drink coffee right before. So that 20 minutes to, for the coffee to kick in, I wake up super energized, that coffee kicked in and I was ready to take on the rest of the day. But man, I could not move. That coffee was minutes. not going to get me through another second without that nap. 20 minutes is not enough for you. But sometimes it'll take me 20 minutes to find a good clip to jack off to. I need more than 20 <laughs> minutes to take a nap. Hey, that's important. I will watch uh, four 15 minute videos all the way through and will not, will not touch myself. And then all of a sudden I find like a four minute clip and I'm like, here we go. <laughs> oh, we didn't talk about this, but we go talk about it on the next episode. Like, yo, finding a good video, a video that really gets you is important, okay? <laughs> And listen, here's the thing. It sucks because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna create an account, right? So I can mm -hmm. never save the videos unless I like just email it to myself. But I purge so many emails when I delete, I just like get all of this shit. I'm tired of looking at it. So I would lose it there too. So <laughs> I gotta keep going in and find what the fuck was it? Creamy BBW Ebony <laughs> Toes Pig in the Room. Amateur POV. <laughs> Amateur POV. Ah, nigga, what was it? What was that big head Peruvian bitch name? <laughs> Yo, and and I have to like it, it, nothing happens. Like I have to also have a mirror handy too. Wait, but what? it's a whole it's a whole setup. It's a whole setup. We've never talked about the mirror being present. You you got to see down there. What the I want to see it. Yes, there's a whole, it's a whole situation. <laughs> that explains why I've never walked in on you because you, you must lock the door. Just don't do it here. Cause that's a whole set. You got a grip it's and a, a light whole, guy. It's you a whole it. situation. <laughs> well, well, where did this, well, where did this go? How did we get here? I don't know. We're going to wrap this up. I got 20 minutes until I get Yes. Yes. My next so, show. Uh, keep emailing us more to the story podcast at gmail.com. Um, we want your DMs. Apparently we do advice too. So just email us things, disturbing DMs and uh, whatever. Oh, topics. Topics you're interested in our uh, point of view on. And uh, this has been another episode of Words of the Story. Thanks. <laughs> Make sure y'all go to Wayfair to get your mirrors. They got they got standing mirrors. Uh -uh. Look, look, Amazon, look. You lucky I don't have it down here because I'll show, show it. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh my man. God. Wow. Should I have emailed you permission to share that first? No, that was <laughs> 
That was great. <laughs> Carrie Baker said she sent an email yesterday. We're gonna check that email out, Carrie. Yes. And uh we're gonna get into some mirror talk. You should get a show that said mirror gang shawty. <laughs> 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 or just mirror gang. And then the inside of it, only a few gonna get that one. I That's wanted to cross camera. the windshield of a car. <laughs> mirror gang. Man, listen, thank y'all so much for watching. We'll see yes. you next week on another episode of More to the Story. Peace, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>